So we've talked about some things that can hinder your prayer life. Let's talk about some things that are keys to having a powerful prayer life. And earlier I said there were 10 and there's seven, so I apologize for that. <laughs> the first key to a powerful prayer life is to pray. And I know that sounds really simple, but if you don't pray, then you're not going to be tapping into that power that comes only from the prayer life. It's just like plugging into the electrical outlet. We could have a heater and we could all be cold and we could have heat and we could know that there was heat available, but if we don't plug it in and turn it on, then we're not going to get warm. And so it's just like that. If you don't pray, start. Just talk to God. In Psalm 1611, it says we are filled with joy in his presence. So if that is the promise of what's going to happen when we go into his presence, then um, it's just motivation to me to pray because I want that joy. I need that joy in my life. My husband is a quiet man, and so praying um, was particularly intimidating to him. And so what I told him was just start. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be um, eloquent. God just wants to hear your heart. He already knows it. He already knows our hearts, but he wants to hear it from us. The second key to a powerful prayer life is to start a prayer journal. One of the things that has been the most transformational in my prayer life is writing down my petitions and my heart to God. One of the things that happens when you take pen to paper, it, it engages something different in our minds than when we're just talking to God out loud. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't talk to God out loud, but incorporate writing in your prayer life. Something can happen with the Holy Spirit when you're writing and you can start out praying about something and I'll find myself writing about something and praying about it and I'm, I am convicted to pray about something completely different. And it just engages that time with the Holy Spirit in a completely different way. Another thing that's so powerful about using a prayer journal is that we get to go back and we get to see the power of God um, where he has answered us in the past or how he has changed your heart. So many times I can go back and look at my prayer journals from past years and see something that I was asking God for, begging God for, not understanding why he wasn't giving it to me, and then um, come down to another two months, three months, sometimes two years, and say, that's why he didn't do that. That's why he um, didn't let that happen. Luke 6.45 tells us that out of our mouth comes the overflow of our heart. So prayer is an intimate time with God, and if we spend that intimate time um, with Him, as you do it, He is faithful to increase the power and the joy in your life. And what we pray for and what we talk about, if it reveals the true condition of our heart, then we need to be praying more and be getting that out. I know that um, I'm so, I don't want to say addicted, but I'm so loyal to my prayer journals that we were in, on vacation in Florida a few months ago and something happened um, that really upset me. And I realized that I hadn't brought my prayer journal. And I made my husband, I didn't make him, but I asked him nicely to go to the store and buy me a notebook because God and I needed to have a conversation on paper. And um, I just needed to get things out of my head onto paper and then I can hand them over to God. Because sometimes, I mean, I don't know about you, but I can lay awake at night thinking about all the things that worry me and stress me out and should I have handled this situation differently? What should I do about this? Blah, 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 blah. And it can keep me awake. And But if I can get it out on my prayer journal and say, God, these are the things I'm worried about and these are the things I'm just bringing to you and I'm putting them on paper and then I'm closing the book and I'm giving them to you because I need rest and you're going to be up all night anyway. And so there's something powerful about doing that. Um, and, and releasing yourself from that. First Peter 5, 6 and 7 tells us, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time, 
Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He's waiting for us to tell him what we're worried about and he'll handle it for us. Thank you.